Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I haven't been on the uh, Bible study making circuit much as of late, but uh, I just haven't felt inspired, if you know what I mean. But um, this is going to be for Christian parents and some advice. Um, if you have the ability, I would relocate out of the big cities. The economic forecast for the United States is not good. The United States owes more money than it's worth. And paper money always collapses. If you're interested in more detailed studies on this, I have them on my site. Not that I'm an economist, but I did take business in college, and I took economics, and every country that's ever gone to paper currency eventually fails, without fail. It always, it, it always happens. Now, that's not to say paper money might not be, you know, it might be collectibles, you know, like the uh, Confederate uh, currency, but the uh, Confederacy no longer exists. The paper money is basically worthless. So, you know, I would suggest getting out of the big cities. There are evil, wicked forces at work trying to stir up trouble. Um, there's a reason why they're flooding our land with these heathen aliens. And it's not going to end good. So if you live in a big major city and you have the ability to relocate, I strongly recommend it. Another thing, too, I recommend strongly is get your kids out of public school. Uh, you can do a YouTube search. Uh, there was a father came to the public school, wanted to pull his kid out um, for whatever reason. You know, not I don't know if he wanted to permanently pull the kid out or just wanted to get him out for the day or whatever, had something going on. And the... Um, I don't know if the police were called or if the police were already there, but they wouldn't let their father have his own kid. I mean, and one of the administrators or a teacher at the school actually videotaped it on their cell phone and posted it to YouTube. The cop arrested the father and took him away. The message is, those children are not yours. They belong to the state. And if we want to do forced vaccinations with mercury and aluminum in the vaccines, hey, they're not your children. Uh, you're just raising them for the state. If we want to teach them evolution, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. The devil knows this. I think that's in the book of Proverbs or Psalms. I, I think it's Proverbs. I, I, I'd have to look it up. But the point is, you teach a child when they're young, and when they get older, chances are they won't depart from it. Well, guess what? They're going to teach them Harry Potter and witchcraft. They're going to teach them sodomy. They're having classes on sodomy in elementary schools. Where did this come from? How many parents agreed to have this? Okay. And please um, pray for President Trump. I just saw a video. All right. This is February 19th. Um, I think it was yesterday. He was in Melbourne, Florida. I grew up there. I went to high school there. I went to Melbourne High School. Mel High, as we called it. And, um, yeah, I grew up there in my teenage years. We were, uh, we were number one. We were number one in drug use in the nation, and we were number one in um, venereal disease. We were number one. Oh, yeah. That was the environment I grew up in. And when I heard that we were number one in drug use and number one in venereal disease, I used to run around going, we're number one. We're number one. But it's not really, it's not funny. You know, and uh, we called it Mel High for a reason. So what can I tell you? 
But President Trump, his wife, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, Melania, um, very classy woman, if you ask me. She opened his speech with a prayer. And I heard about this on the news, and I'm like, oh, yeah, she probably read something from the Old Testament. But some pressed me to, to, to take a look, to delve further into this. So I, I, I looked it up, and I, you know, Trump's, you know, prayer in Melbourne. Well, guess what pops up? She did the Lord's Prayer. I was shocked. I was like, really? You know, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him to, you know, teach us to pray. And he said, pray on this manner. And, he, you know, they call it the Lord's Prayer. She repeated it. I was shocked and the crowd was cheering. I was like, wow, maybe there is hope for this country. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I tell you what, pray for his protection because most of you people are totally ignorant of the number of Satanists running around in this country. Some of the Satanists call themselves Catholics. Some of them call themselves Protestants. Some of them call themselves Jews. Some of them don't call themselves anything. But they are everywhere. And they promote everything but evil. I mean, it was, you know. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you remember Michelle Obama or my, uh, is it Michael? I don't know. Or uh, Barack ever doing a prayer from the New Testament? Uh, no, I don't remember. How about Hillary? Hillary ever do a, a prayer from the, the, the Bible, New Testament? Uh, not that I know of, you know? And let me tell you something. Everybody says, oh yeah, Barack Obama, he's Muslim. Really? Did you know his half-brother is a Jew that lives in Tel Aviv, the capital of the Israeli state? Yeah. A black Jew. But Obama's Muslim, right? Hmm. And then you got Michael, I mean, I'm sorry, is it Michelle or, or is it Michael? I don't know. You know, I don't want to see Barack, Barack's birth certificate. I want to see Michelle's birth certificate. Was that one born a man? I don't know. Um, you know, uh, there's some YouTube videos that show it on Ellen and shows a bulge in between the legs and either that's a man or a tampon got loose. I don't know, you know, but it's, you know, several times. But, I, you know, I don't mean to be crude, but, you know, did, did we just have a sodomites in the White House? I don't know. But let me, but, but the point I'm trying to make is Michelle's cousin is head of the black rabbis in Chicago. Look it up, people. Look it up. Type in Michelle Obama, Black Rabbi Cousin, Chicago, in YouTube. I mean, I'm sorry, in Google. It'll pop up. It did. You know, I don't want to get his name and, you know, you can look it up if you want to. You know, and while you're at it, look at, uh, there's a site called Arkansas, A-R-K, um, a-N-C-I-D-E, I think it is. Type in Arkansas. And uh, look at the trail of death Hillary and Bill have left. I mean, there's like over a hundred and something people all connected to them in business or, you know, they're all died. You know, um, Arkansas state troopers that used to provide um, police protection for the governor, a lot of them died when they got called to go into court to testify of what they saw at various times. There's a number of Secret Service agents that died. There was a bunch of women that accused Bill of rape. They ended up being dead. Yes, I know there's a few that are still alive, but there's a lot that aren't, you know? We have, you know, this Pizzagate thing, I, I totally believe it. I mean, it, it's happening in Australia. It's happening in 
um, England, and it's happening here. And the average Christian just does not care. So, people, please pray for Trump. I'm I'm hoping he's uh, I'm hoping he's the real deal. I I really do. But I tell you what, repentance. You know, there's people that tell you, oh, well, you don't have to repent. Just just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? Read the second, uh, read the first chapter, first chapter, second chapter, both of them, of the book of James. Satan believes in God. Is he saved? No. His works are evil, and he'll never repent. Never. But we have to repent. And then, you know, people will try to confuse us by saying, well, God repented. Yeah, God changed his mind about doing destruction, just like he did in the book of Jonah when he was going to destroy Nineveh. When people repent, God will turn away from the evil that he was going to bring upon a nation. Read the book of Judges. Matter of fact, the Bible starts in Genesis 1-1, people, and it doesn't end until Revelation 22. Every single word in the King James Bible belongs to us. So, you know, you've got a lot of people working against Trump. Oh, and by the way, there are six major corporations that own like 98% of the media in the United States. That's ABC, CBS, NBC, uh, Fox. And they're all controlled or run or owned by people that claim to be Jews. And I got an article down in the description uh, written by Joel Stein, a Jewish author, where he totally brags about, yeah, we Jews, we, we run and control Hollywood, and we control and run the media, we control and run the banks, and we, you know, yeah, it's all ours, you know. And, and he says, I don't care if, you know, you Gentiles or Goyim know that we run it. I just care that we continue to get to run everything. Well, and then people will tell me, oh, well, you know, Jews and Christians all have the same God. Well, do they? Well, do Jews and Christians have the same God? Well, in John 14 and verse 6, Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, I've had pastors say, well, you know, the Jews have got a different covenant. Really? Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. How about John 3.36? He that hath, I'm sorry, John 3.36, he that believeth on the Son, and who's the Son? That's Jesus, who is Christ. He that believeth on, on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. Uh, let's see. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath hath not life. Okay. So, I only see three different things. Either your Bible's mistranslated, and this is not true, uh, or perhaps Jesus was a liar, or your preacher that tells you the Jews have another covenant and they don't need Jesus, perhaps he's the liar. So which is it? The Bible's mistranslated, Jesus is a liar, or your pastor is a liar? Huh. 
In the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 4, we say, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And that includes me. Let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See, all Christians are going to be judged. We're not under God's wrath. If you're in the blood of Christ, you're not going to suffer God's wrath. You might suffer Satan's wrath, your physical flesh body, but you're not going to suffer the wrath of God. But you will. Every one of us is going to be judged for the things we did or didn't do. So, all right, well, let's see. All right, how about 1 John chapter 2, verse 20? But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. I'm going to let you in a little secret. Muslims, uh... They may not deny that Jesus is the Christ as the Messiah as they know it, but they do believe he's a sinless prophet. They believe he's a true prophet and that he was sinless that when he walked on the earth. So who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Do you know Jews actually deny that Jesus is the Christ? By Bible definition, not my definition, by Bible definition. Read it again. Open up your Bible and read this, preferably a King James. Jews are Antichrist. And I was shocked to listen to Melania, or Melania, or I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm sorry. Uh, read the Lord's Prayer. I, I, my jaw, my eyes watered up. My eyes watered up. I was like almost in tears. I couldn't believe this. Pray for him, pray for him, people, because you know what? They're out to kill him. I, he's either he's either one of them who's tricked us all, or he's or he's going to probably end up like John F. Kennedy, dead. And, and if you believe that uh, Kennedy was killed by a lone assassin, and uh, and then all the hundred a hundred and something witnesses that uh, came forward to describe what they saw, that they ended up being dead. A hundred and something witnesses that saw the shooting ended up being dead within two to, the, two to three years. Yeah. Just a coincidence, right? Right. Yeah, it's amazing. I was uh, pretty young when Kennedy was killed, but when I got older, I started researching it. You know? Matter of fact, um, do a thing on fake news. Uh, look up Go to uh, Google or YouTube and type in uh, Sandy Hook actors. Robbie Parker, R-O-B-B-I-E-P-A-R-K-E-R. -E -E I remember that guy on CNN. And you, you could watch him smiling and laughing. And then and then next thing you know, he gets, uh, he, he starts breathing heavy. And then next thing you know, he, he gets in front of the camera and starts, Oh, boo-hoo, my daughter died. My daughter died. That's why you were laughing 10, minutes, 10 seconds before that? Really? I wouldn't be laughing if my daughter died. Uh, what can I tell you? You know? Uh, yeah, there's fake news people. And like I say, the news media is antichrist. By Bible definition. Does the news media exalt Jesus Christ? No. No, they don't. 
Matter of fact, uh, it's it's all about uh, vampires and the occult. And if it isn't about Satanism and the occult, it's all about um, sex and violence and murders and explosions and gun violence. And, you know, that's... Uh, that's 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 TV and movies. You know what can I tell you? And they don't want anything to do with people getting into Christianity. You know, look at Tim Tebow. He was a decent quarterback, and the NFL let him go because they don't want somebody in the end zone, kneeling down in prayer and giving thanks to God. They don't want that. I call it the National Felons League. But, you know, if you sit around watching uh, football, you probably don't know anything about the Bible anyways. You know, if you spent, if you spent the 3, 6, 12, 16 hours a week that you spend watching football and study the Bible and did the prayer of James... In chapter one, asking for wisdom and knowledge, you'd be, and you did that every week, you'd be quite knowledgeable in a couple of years. That's what I did. I turned off my TV. Matter of fact, I didn't even own a TV when I came to the Lord. I don't think. I don't think I did. Now, there's been a lot of times in my life I've never even owned a TV. Why? Because I know it's fake news. It's garbage. It's filth. So, all right, well, um, what can I tell you? Pray for Trump, people. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, signing off.